In today's presentation, we are going to discuss about the recent pandemic outbreak of coronavirus disease 2019, that is COVID-19. Kindly bear in mind that the data being presented in this video correspond to the date of recording of the video, that is 14th of March 2020. So first, let's take a look at the statistics related to COVID-19. On December 31st, 2019, WHO China office was informed of pneumonia of unknown cause in Wuhan city, Hubei province of China. The initial cases were found in people associated with seafood and live animal market in Wuhan. On 7th of January 2020, COVID-19 was isolated and identified as the causative virus. On January 30, 2020, WHO, that is World Health Organization, declared it a public health emergency of international concern. On 11th of March 2020, the WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros Adnom Ghebreyesus, in his opening remark at the media briefing on COVID-19, characterized COVID-19 as a pandemic. The term pandemic relates to a disease which is prevalent over a whole country or the entire world. According to the WHO statistics on novel coronavirus COVID-19 situation as of 14th of March 2020 in the United States of America, 1,678 cases have been reported with 41 deaths and in India, 82 confirmed cases have been reported with two deaths. The first case in India was reported on January 30 in a patient from Kerala. As of 14th of March 2020, WHO has reported about 142,649 cases spanning over 135 countries with a reported 5,393 deaths. COVID-19 was initially named 2019 novel coronavirus, novel meaning new. This novel coronavirus has been designated as severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, that is SARS-CoV-2, by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. This is responsible for causing pneumonia of unknown etiology that rapidly develops into acute respiratory distress syndrome, similar to SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV outbreak in the past. SARS-CoV is the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus responsible for the outbreak in China 2003 and MERS-CoV that is the Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus responsible for a similar outbreak in Saudi Arabia 2012. At least six other types of coronaviruses are known to infect humans with some causing common cold Talking about the coronavirus, it is a zoonotic pathogen that is it spreads from animal to man. The virus jumps from animals to human which is termed as spillover due to the mutation of virus on increased contact with animals. The Chinese horseshoe bats that is Rhinolophus sinicus is the most probable origin and pangolins are most likely the intermediate host with human being the definitive host. In case of SARS-CoV, civet cats were found to be the intermediate host and in MERS-CoV, it was found to be associated with camels. The virus is named based on the Latin word corona, meaning crown. It is named so because of its appearance as it is made up of a core of genetic material enveloped by a crown of protein spikes that protrude from its surface thus resembling a crown. SARS-CoV is a RNA virus and it is enveloped in a bubble of oily lipid and protein layer and it is this layer which falls apart or disintegrates on contact with soap, hence the indication of washing hands with soap as a preventive measure. Talking about the pathogenesis of the virus, how does it cause the disease? The virus enters the body through the nose, mouth or eyes, then attaches to cells in the airway that produce a protein called ACE2. The virus is believed to have originated in bats where it may have attached to a similar protein. 
The virus infects the cell by infusing by fusing its oily membrane with the membrane of the cell. Once inside, the coronavirus releases a snippet of genetic material called RNA. Following this, there is hijacking of the cell. The infected cell reads the RNA and begins making proteins that will keep the immune system at bay and help assemble new copies of the virus. Then the cell goes on to make viral proteins. As the infection progresses, the machinery of the cell begins to churn out new spikes and other proteins that will form more copies of the coronavirus. All these new copies of the virus get assembled and are carried to the outer edges of the cell where it, the cell breaks up and releases the virus leading to a spreading of the infection. Each infected cell can release millions of copies of the virus before the cell finally breaks down and dies. The viruses may infect nearby cells or end up in droplets that escape the lungs. Now, most COVID-19 infections cause a fever. This fever occurs as an immune response of the, of the body in order to fight off or ward off the infection to clear the virus. In severe cases, the immune system can overreact and start attacking lung cells. The lung cells become obstructed with fluid and dying cells make it difficult to breathe. A small percentage of infections can lead to acute respiratory distress syndrome and possibly death. The transmission of disease. Based on findings of genetic and epidemiological research, it appears that COVID-19 outbreak started with a single animal-to-human transmission followed by a sustained human-to-human -human spread. It is now believed that its interpersonal transmission occurs mainly via respiratory droplets and contact transmission, contact with patient respiratory secretions, as well as contaminated surface and equipments. In addition, there may be a risk of fecal-oral transmission as researchers have identified SARS-CoV-2 in the stool of patients from China and the United States. However, whether SARS-CoV can be spread through aerosols or vertical transmission that is from mothers to their newborns is yet to be confirmed. Although patients with symptomatic COVID-19 have been the main source of transmission, recent observations suggest that asymptomatic patients and patients in the incubation period are also carriers of SARS-CoV-2. As it is believed that coughing and sneezing can expel virus-laden droplets onto nearby people and surfaces where the virus can remain infectious for several hours to several days. Thus, CDC recommends that people diagnosed with COVID-19 bear masks to reduce the release of viruses. As well as healthcare workers and others who care for infected people should wear masks too. The reproductive number of novel coronavirus, according to an article published on 22nd Feb 2020 by Zhang S. et al. The R0 number during the early stage experienced on the Diamond Princess cruise ship is about 2.28 with a range of 2.06 to 2.52. That means that one, from one person, the virus can spread to 2.8 different people. The future daily incidence and probable outbreak size is largely dependent on the change of R0 so what are the symptoms of COVID-19? Incubation period is 1 to 12.5 days, average being 5 to 6 days. Incubation period is the period between exposure to an infection and the appearance of the first symptoms. It is evidence that incubation period could be as long as 14 days, which is now the commonly adopted duration for medical observation and quarantine of potentially exposed persons. The majority of patients experience fever and dry cough, with some also had shortness of breath, fatigue, and other atypical symptoms such as muscle pain, confusion, headaches, sore throat, diarrhea, and vomiting. There was a rapid progression to pneumonia and consequently respiratory failure within a week. In few patients, there was kidney failure followed by death. According to the current data, fatality rate, that is, cumulative deaths divided by cumulative cases of COVID-19, ranges to about 0.39% to 4.05%, depending on different regions of China. And this is lower than that of SARS, that is, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which was approximately 10%, and MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which was approximately 34%. 
yet it is higher than that of seasonal influenza which is only about 0.01% to 0.17%. In general, older age and existence of underlying comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension and cardiovascular disease were associated with poorer prognosis. So this was about COVID-19, the March statistics and the pathogenesis as well as clinical manifestations. As it is a vast topic, so we shall be discussing this in parts. In subsequent presentation, we shall discuss about diagnosis, management and most importantly, the preventive measures. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.